Okay. Okay, great. Thank you all for making this amazing film. Um, what made you all want to be part of this? Alicia. Alicia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um... We have a system. Okay. So, yeah, that's that's what these looks are for. <laughs> okay. Great. Yeah. No, I was the first one to get involved in the film. Um, because Julie, I think, has made so many films in the realm of politics and gender equity. And I've sure. been doing I've been doing that work in Texas for quite some time, um, yes. but more in the realm of abortion advocacy and sexual assault and human trafficking advocacy. Um, and then uh, ultimately ended up coming out as intersex in a Texas state Senate hearing to kill the bathroom bill. Um, and so I guess Julie heard about my story through all of that work and spoke with me and wanted to wanted me to get involved. And I was actually supposed to make a different film a couple years back. And it okay. ended up, yeah, it ended up feeling really icky and negative and exploitative. And um, while unfortunately we're all too used to that as intersex people, we're often sure. treated like specimens or animals in a zoo or lab rats or whatever um it never feels good and so to yeah. have to have someone like julie then come to me after in a way that felt um like real solidarity and like someone who really had integrity that wanted to know our stories and and share them with the world um it it felt really different the whole vibe felt different i trusted her sure. pretty quickly into the process and uh, so when she mentioned that she wanted to get some other stories involved beyond my own, my my first person that I thought of was Saipa. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I think uh, Alicia had gave uh, Julie my contact information and Julie reached out to me. And I feel like, um, you know, Julie was very direct, really transparent um, and yeah, I just had a sense that she had integrity. Um, and I think my experience with media has been, you know, it's been great and it's been terrible. Um, and so basically, you know, I feel like she, um, yeah, I, I feel like she she was um, a sort of documentarian that I could really share my story with and kind of lean into. Um, so that's how I got involved. Okay. And I was the last to join um, Saif and Alicia. Uh, they, Saif and Alicia had been planning a protest at Wild Cornell in New York and yeah. they invited me to speak. And it was my first time speaking on an intersex protest. Um, and it was really affirming for me to kind of just be collectively amongst all these intersex people. And for the first time, like publicly, not just like on social media or like in a, interview or something um publicly um express all my rage against uh, the medical establishment and it just piqued the interest of julie to uh, um invite me to be part of the trio and i had a lot of reservations at first just because i felt comfortable as an actor um, in roles and never fully just embodying kind of like my own story and also relinquishing control over my own story just because a lot of my work is uh, self-scripted and and I'm also a director as well so to trust somebody else with sure. how they were going to shape my story uh, definitely was scary to me but quickly um, I learned with filming early on with Julie that she was just a uh, a person and a director with a lot of heart that created a safe space for me and for the three of us to to really stand in our power and and celebrate our existences as intersex people. Thank you. At, at the beginning of the film, you all talk about the lack of representation, and often when it, you know there is representation, it's maybe sensationalized or completely misunderstood. Can you talk about that? We can we do the same thing. Uh, could, could you repeat the question one more time? Sure. At the beginning of the film, you all talk about the lack of representation. Um, and oftentimes, you know, 
when it is depicted, it's sensationalized or completely misunderstood. Can you talk about that? I can start. I mean, I think oh. like um, often when intersex has been brought up, one, it hasn't been brought up as intersex. Usually sure. it's sort of brought up as like hermaphrodite or like a person having both or like just some real inaccuracies. Um, sure. And I think it helps to feed the stereotypes and feed the misconception. So I think this documentary hopefully will be the first of many documentaries and films that actually honor um, intersex people's lives and experiences, um, that we're not mythical, um, that we are actually um, real human beings. Sure. Um, and yeah, that, yeah, I think we need more in media. I think there needs to be more representation that actually humanizes um, intersex people. Okay. All right. Another misconception, I think, is that this is something new, just like people think yeah. trans, trans people are new, or it's like, we've been around forever, we will be here forever, and we're everywhere. Um, I think mm -hmm. it blows people's mind when they hear that we're as common as redheads, because it's like, if you've ever met a redhead, you've definitely met an intersex person, you just didn't know it. And sure. that's why I'm proud to also have my book coming out in verse cowgirl uh that writes about my experience specifically as an intersex texan because you know saifa having lived in georgia i also spent some time in georgia but significantly less than than saifa but living mm -hmm. in texas you know this isn't some newfangled thing that people in the hip liberal cities of the coasts are doing you know for fun it's like we're everywhere they're they're in they're intersex people all across the south and the more that we fix just the utter lack of representation, the more of us will come out and share our stories and we'll seem like less mythical creatures like Saifa talked about. Okay, all right. Sa Saifa, how long were you actually in Georgia? I live in Atlanta, Georgia uh, from the end of 2012 until October 2020. So okay, wow. I was def yes, I was definitely. I know about the Georgia boys. I know about ATL. I lived in <laughs> Southwest Atlanta, and my house is still there. Oh, that's great. I mean, the South is. I mean, the South is obviously. How would you describe the South in in in, in tackling equal rights for people? <laughs> and, and I mean especially Atlanta. Oh, is Atlanta getting better or is Atlanta still lagging far behind? You know, I haven't lived in Atlanta in a few years, yeah. um, but I think Atlanta is, I mean, that's a whole conversation onto itself, right? <laughs> um, I think, you know, it, it's so complex, right? Especially uh, with all the politics around Cop City, um, exactly. the murder of, you know, Tortuguita, you know, um, I just feel like the hyper gentrification that has happened in Atlanta. Sure. Um, and also before I came, before you came on the call, it made me think of, um, state rep Jenny Earhart, who yes. had tried to introduce sort of anti-trans legislation, I believe in 2017 or 20, I think it was 2018 or 2019. Right. Sure. Um, and later it sort of came out that she was working with folks from the Society for Evidence-Based Gender Medicine and these really conservative groups that she was sort of testing the waters. Sure. So, you know, I feel like, um, you know, my experience is like, if you're gonna, if you're a queer person who wants to stay in the South, you're gonna live in the bigger cities like Austin, like Atlanta, like Memphis. Um, and I think Atlanta definitely, I, I see there's a real fight for the soul of Atlanta right now. Exactly. I, ha I have to ask you, I, I'm so excited that Focus Features is distributing this film and putting it in theaters next week and beyond it. How important is it for this film to be in theaters across the nation and also to be streaming to, to really share this message? I think it's revolutionary for for focus to be doing this um you know there there has been intersex um films out however to for 
a theatrically released documentary like nationwide it's just on um, it's just the first time that's ever happened so it's yeah. it's historic i think um i think it's going to be a real game changer for people who had no idea about what it means to be intersex to become educated and familiar with with our cause and our fight okay. and just what we're trying to do as human beings um but i think for queer people, specifically for intersex people out, you know, in all parts of the country, and hopefully when this gets released to, you know, the greater uh, global population, um, I think it's intersex people are going to finally see themselves in a way that um, is empowering and joyful okay. and... Um, and will will hopefully help them feel less lonely, and also will help galvanize to to join us and other activists um, uh, in in the fight that we're we're fighting for. Okay, mm -hmm. great. And sorry to Th jump in, but we're good. Just to wrap. Thanks. Exactly. Thank you all so much for your time. Sorry I'm late. I really enjoyed talking to you, and I think the documentary is tremendous. Thank you so much. Thank